a very good afternoon to one and all. Okay, when Pastor asked me to share, it was a week when I was quite depressed. When I received that WhatsApp message, I was thinking, what is up in his mind? What is he asking me to share, especially on this topic on depression? Well, I believe there is a purpose for everything. So, of course, immediately when I received the message, I didn't reply him. I actually told him that give me some time because uh, at that time I was a bit very concerned and worried about the result of the colonoscopy. But then I told him that, so he was he stayed there. I didn't give him a reply until I got my result. So I, I since I had to give my word when it was positive uh, in the sense uh, everything was fine. So I took the challenge to share. Today's uh, sharing is on depression. And this whole week, we have touched a lot on all these negative emotions, uh, elements like doubts, anxiety, fear, and then depression. Depression is the most uh, negative emotional impact on everybody. So, and the passage that we are going to read is... Uh, First King, chapter 19, and it's on Prophet Elijah. Perhaps uh, I'd like to have a volunteer to read First King, chapter 19, verse 1 to 18. So First King, chapter 19, verse 1. Uh, now I have told Zezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Zezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Bathsheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Verse 5. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. Verse 7. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. <clears throat> Verse 8, so he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. Verse 9, there he went into the cave and spent the night. And the, Lord, and the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? Verse 10, he replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant Turn down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword, and I'm the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Verse 11, the Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. Verse 12, after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire came a gentle whisper. Verse 13, when Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Verse 14, he replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant. Torn down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I'm the only one left and now they are trying to kill me too. Verse 15. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazil, king over Aram. Verse 16. Also, anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel, and anoint Elijah, son of Shaphat, from Abel Mehola to succeed you as prophet. Verse 17. Jehu will put to, the, to death anyone who escaped the sword of Hazel, and Elisha will put to death any who escaped the sword of Jehu. Verse 18. 
Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal and whose mouth have not kissed him. Thank you for reading the verses. Very, very long verses. But what I learned, what God has spoken to me when I read this is that despite Elijah, whose name actually means my God, my Lord. And many a times as we read in this verses 1 to 18, he has repeated this verse or not. I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. This something strikes me very much. Why? Because he is actually a man of God. He wanted to do so much for God. And yet he was also fall into depression. Why? God again spoke to me, you know, sometimes you can be so zealous for God and you have done all that you need to do and has been very obedient to God. God asked you to do this, 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 and he actually followed every step of the way. He did two miracles prior to these uh, verses and he must be very encouraged that God was all the while with him. He was so anointed. The Holy Spirit was with him. And that was why he could perform the miracles. I don't want to go back to those verses and we know that he has performed great miracles. He has helped the orphan and he saved the orphan son. All those miracles is actually because he walked very close with God and the anointing was on him. So, but despite all those that he has experienced and many a time in these whole verses, there were a few times he said, I am very, very zealous for you, O oh God. So one thing I learned from here is that when he was away, running away from King Ahab, and he was alone, when somebody is all alone, it's very, very easy. Your mind will start to think of many, many negative things. And that's where the Satan will attack us. And that is where the mind is the battlefield for the, for the evil one, for Satan. And that's where he was caught. He was very, very upset. He, he wanted to the, come to the point that he asked God, take my life. I have done all I could, and yet the people still remain unfaithful, still remain wicked, still remain praying to the God above, still remain praying to idols. What have I done? I have done all I could, but yet they still could not turn away from the wicked ways. So because of that, you know, the mind is a battlefield for, and that's where he asked God to take his life. And then this verse again spoke to me. God again is, again is very faithful. Indeed, God is faithful. God gave him assignment to do. Let him Take away all the negative thoughts from his mind and start to focus on God again. So this is what I learned as I read this whole chapter of chapter 19. And there is one part that we were supposed to read is Psalm 43. And this is what it helps me again. I'd like to have another volunteer to read Psalm 43. Declare me innocent, O God. Defend me against these ungodly people because rescue me from these unjust liars. For you are God, my only safe haven. Why have you tossed me aside? Why must I wander around in grief, oppressed by my enemies? Send out your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Let them lead me to your holy mountain, to the place where you live. There I will go to the altar of God, to God, the source of all my joy. I will praise you with my heart, O God, my, Lord, my God. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Amen, amen. Indeed, indeed this is a verse that always encourages all of us. When we are down, especially when this time when Prophet Elijah, he felt that he did not do enough, or maybe he felt very guilty. He has killed so many prophets at the time uh, when they were having this challenge uh, uh, of 
the two authors that will serve there, that they were doing this, and then he hit many people, and therefore he was very, very afraid. And he asked God to vindicate him. Sometimes we do come, uh, we do have this such of experiences when we have been, uh, when people badmouth us, something accuses us for say, doing things that we didn't do, and we feel very bad about it, and we start to go into a depression because we felt that, are we that bad? Why are people saying all the bad things about me? We start to think of all the negative thoughts that comes into our mind. And it can come to a point where we can actually go into depression. So again, we have to be comforted by this words. We have to be, we have to focus on God again. How can we do that? How for me, I have these few steps that I will do. We know that our mind is the background of the Satan. Sometimes our own nature comes back to us and we start to think of all the bad things and the world come into our mind. And therefore, we need to be continuously to focus on God's word. How? When we are feeling that we are depressed, especially for me when I was so concerned about my results and worried, I decided to talk to a lot of Christian friends and they give me a lot of encouragement, a lot of permission and encouragement. And I tell myself, I'm not going to think of the worst. I'm going to think of the best for me because I know my God will deliver me. So what I did was I start to meditate on God's word. I start to hear God's worship song. Day and night, I start playing. I put it on my, my headset and start singing along, you know. And it definitely encourages me so much. And then I pray, and I keep praying and praising God, you know. And that time after I did that, I have a very good night's sleep. I also want to thank a lot of Christian friends who has given me much, much encouragement. I think this is how we should come up from depression. Now. This is how I feel, and that is my experience, my simple sharing for today.